Hey, what's up guys? John here. The credit card bubble is about to pop and what's ultimately going to happen is banks are going to restrict lending to such a degree in which people will default at a mass level. And the reason for this is because many consumers right now are reliant on credit cards to make ends meet due to inflation, the high cost of living, potentially getting laid off from their job. There's so many moving variables right now in this economy forcing people to depend on their credit cards. However, as we start to see a lot more uncertainty with small regional banks, we are likely going to start to see more and more of these dominoes fall when we look at the hard real data of what's going on, not just in the banking sector, but what's going on with credit and defaults and the amount of money that's being requested from consumers just to make ends meet. Now, I'm gonna make a very bold prediction in this video. And you know, I'm, I'm not gonna brag, but the last two months I've made some other predictions and so far they've all come true. And I believe that this prediction in this video will 100% come true in the next six months. I would bet almost anything on it. So in, and just for credibility purpose, two months ago, the global banking collapse confirmed how the, I did this video about two weeks before uh, SVB and all that stuff happened. And this video, I said, commercial real estate collapse worse than 1929. This is about eight weeks ago, seven, eight weeks ago. Uh, this is before Elon and before everyone else was talking about commercial real estate. Before Charlie Munger, before Warren Buffett all talked about commercial real estate, I was the, I was the first one to, to post this. You can, you can fact check me on this. You can look at the headlines and uh, fact check me. Uh, housing shortage is a scam rents to crash. And I talked about how homeowners have very limited equity in their properties. And because of the high cost of living, people are going to be forced to become landlords, many of them. And then Yahoo News came out two weeks later and did something titled Becoming an Accidental Landlord. So what I think is going to happen right now is, uh, is pretty unbelievable. So Fed survey, banks are tightening up lending standards after rate hikes. Now, in April, April 12th, they said consumers had about $976 billion in outstanding consumer debt. And by the way, if you have credit card debt, I'm going to give you some tips on what you can do right now to escape before all this chaos actually starts to unfold. So $976 billion, right? This came out April 28th. This data is from April 12th, right? Average uh, interest rate, 20 4%. However, if you're making the minimum payments and you borrow $5,000, you are probably paying back $16,000 or $17,000. So the 24% is compounding. It just continues to compound. I mean, loan sharks in New York 50 years ago were probably charging 18%. So this is pretty crazy. Uh, where consumers are right now, they're saying is $1.24 trillion in outstanding consumer debt. 1.24 trillion, and this came out May 7th. Consumers racked up record credit card debt as the pandemic savings dwindled. And so when we're looking at this credit card debt chart held mainly by uh, millennials and Gen X, most of it is held by that. Over half, I mean, over half of all credit card debt, even more, is held by this uh, group, right? But here's what's going on. Falling incomes, no more pandemic stimulus, a softening labor market, declining home equity, dwindling savings, and I'll add to this a diminishing stock portfolio, diminishing crypto equity and wealth in which many people thought that they had. Uh, people overspent on many things, and you know, second cars and a lot of uh, a lot of liabilities are in this market right now because people thought they had way more money than they did. However, that was all propped up by the Fed's policies over the last couple of years. Now these policies are reversing and they're going to likely be very aggressive over the next six to 12 months as interest rates continue to likely increase in the short term, making the cost to service this debt so much more expensive. And what I think is ultimately going to happen is I believe that there's gonna be a lot of supply of people trying to sell things to try to drum up liquidity because they're not gonna be able to get it from their local banks. So they're probably gonna be selling second cars, watches, artwork, homes, second homes. People are gonna start to sell things. And if the cost to borrow money is through the roof, these prices are gonna have to come down because there's gonna be very limited buyers that can really afford to, uh, to purchase. And so as this is beginning to happen, you might say, okay, John, it's just credit card debt. It's not that big of a deal. But if you look at personal savings rates, personal savings rate, is you know in June it was 2.7%. Now it's 5.1%. This happened in you know 2007, 2008 that period. But before that, we weren't. Nothing happened in that uh, in that type of uh, position. What we're going to start to see here, though, 
is more of this. So more Americans, you know, skipping meals to afford housing payments. And what I think is ultimately going to happen is I believe that we're going to just start to see everything kind of shut off in terms of lending if we start to see more and more and more of these bank uh, collapses occur. And why I believe that they will likely continue to occur is because I believe that the Fed's policies are putting more pressure on banks. If they continue to increase interest rates, and they do so, and regional banks have diminishing deposits, and they have increased liabilities, how do they make it? How do they really make it? They don't. And so what I think is going to happen is we're going to start to see a consolidation of banks like I've discussed in the past. And so if you have outstanding credit card debt, this is the best time. There will never be a better time to get out of credit card debt. Whether it be, you know, renting out a room in your apartment, maybe even moving from your bedroom to the living room, renting out the uh, bedroom and just using all the rental income from the bedroom to offset uh, credit card debt. I personally think that there's a better way though, and that better way is a balanced transfer. Transferring a high interest credit card debt to a credit card at 0% interest. If you can do this, let's say you owe $10,000, and right now on your current payment plan, you're paying 200 bucks or $220 a month, and you're hoping to pay this off in five years because you're paying 25% interest. If you were to do that balanced transfer and you could pay $800 a month, in the course of a year, you'd be completely debt free for zero interest. This will allow you to get ahead and it will position you for a much easier life when things start to get a little bit more chaotic. However, you do need a good credit score for this, usually a credit score in the 700 to 730 range. And so if you're applying for credit cards you're not going to get approved for, what's ultimately going to happen is just going to be an inquiry on your credit, which might drop your score five points or 10 points. Nothing major, but it's still negative on your score. So. I'd only apply for cards in which you think you're gonna be able to get approved for. And so if you have bad credit, maybe you have late payments, medical bills, collections, charge-offs, bankruptcies, foreclosures, repossessions, any of that, and your score is getting greatly punished, we'd love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. Did you know just one late payment on a credit card, just one, one payment, can drop your score up to 180 points. So you could be in a perfect 800 credit score, miss one payment and be in the low 600s. And so I believe what's ultimately gonna happen is we begin to see this consolidation of banks and a tightening of lending is the only people that will be able to do these balance transfers, get access to liquidity for their business, and to really be able to flourish during these uncertain times with people with great credit, so this is the best time to fix your credit. I personally think that what we're gonna start to see here is this number go from 1.24 trillion to probably a trillion 350, a trillion four, uh, and then everything's just gonna shut off. That's what I think is gonna happen. Maybe a trillion five tops, because people are going to demand more and more and more credit, and banks simply are gonna look at the writing on the wall and realize, hey, why would I lend money to consumers that don't have money and have no ability to pay us back? They wouldn't. They're not going to do that. And when we start to see these commercial real estate loan defaults begin to occur and more and more of these small regional banks start to collapse, it's just going to give more power and authority to these big banks. And these big banks are going to rewrite the rules that are going to favor them and favor you know, all the wealthy. That's what I think is going to happen. Uh, I don't actually see another way in which this could be um, you know, U-turned unless the Fed just turns the money printer back on, gives everyone tons and tons of money. But even if that did happen, we would just see record high inflation and we would likely see more and more and more borrowing, more irresponsible behavior and an even bigger problem down the road. And as that has begun to happen, if that does happen, we will likely see more and more countries de-dollarize even faster because who would want to fund that? Who would want to buy our debt? So I do believe this is the best time to get debt free. This is the best time to get an education, to learn. The economy is changing. There's going to be massive opportunities for smart and savvy entrepreneurs and business people that want to you know, make smart decisions and grow a business. When we start to witness what's going on right now and we start to see all of this chaos begin to ensue, there is going to be you know, an unlimited amount of opportunity for the smart and savvy that have a plan. So drop your comments below. What do you think about this? Do you think that we're going to start to see this credit card bubble uh, explode in Q3, Q4 of this year? Like Ken Griffin said, he said that consumers have $1 trillion in savings and they're burning $120 billion a month. And with these interest rate hikes continuing to rise, that's probably going to $125, $130 billion a month. It, it's pretty crazy. His prediction is by the end of the year, 
we're going to be in a full blown, not depression, but like a deep recession, I believe is what he said. But we haven't seen one of those in 15 years, 14 years. And most Americans don't know what that looks like. Most Americans have been accustomed to seeing five, 10 percent annual appreciation on their homes and on their assets and everything just going up, up, up in value. And seeing a big reverse of that, I think is going to spark a next level amount of fear in this economy. But I'm curious as to what you think. Again, massive opportunities ahead for the smart and savvy. I highly suggest getting debt free and positioning yourself to where you will be able to get loans when things hit the fan. Drop your comments below, hit the like button, subscribe here, and uh, add me on IG for short form content. If you need help fixing your credit, we would love to help you at greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. Give us a call at 561-430-5900.